Still Eriksson in a good spot, difficult angle but Christian Eriksson has made it look easy there. Eriksson scores his first of the season now. Looks out wide for Hakimi, is he on? I think he is just about on. Cross coming in for Lukaku. Oh my god Lukaku! That's a bicycle kick there! We're up against Real Madrid in the Champions League group stages in this episode. It's gonna be one hell of a game against them. I think we've had a very good start to our season. Top of the league right now, same amount of points as AC Milan, Juventus and Roma. The competition in this Serie A is intense, let's just put it that way. But I'm very happy with how we're doing so far and in this episode I want to just keep it flowing. Of course we've got a massive fixture in this episode in the Champions League and that is against Real Madrid. Yup, that game will be in this episode and I think it's going to be huge to decide who finishes first in the group. So that's going to be a massive game. Now as you know a couple of our key players are out injured in Ivan Perisic and Arturo Vidal for like 7 months. So in this episode we're going to try and find some sort of a solution to cope with this injury crisis that we're dealing with because at the moment our squad is looking very weak without those two. Big episode guys, lots of decisions to make and a lot's gonna happen in this one. So if you're enjoying the series, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new around here and let's kick this one off. Press conference to start off the episode. Do you think it's a good idea to have a limit on the transfer rules since players are getting injured and you don't know what else is going to happen? I've seen so many comments telling me that this rule is too harsh and with all the injuries because of the realism mod and whatnot, you're gonna find yourself in trouble. That guys is the challenge of this series, limiting ourselves to you know not signing crazy players and improving the team in like one shot. This way I think the series is gonna be a lot more realistic and fun. Yep along the way we're gonna have to deal with a lot of hardships but that's part of career mode and I think it'll be a lot more fun this way. I'm already really excited about what we're going to do to cope with this injury crisis so stay tuned to find out i'm not going to be changing the transfer limit it's two transfers in the summer window and one more that we can make in the winter transfer window that's still the plan next up start a youth academy as the team is lacking squad depth you're not wrong here this could be the solution to our problems if we can bring in maybe two or three youngsters who are like top talents and we can occasionally play them here and there that could really help us with our injury crisis. Of course, in the big games, we'll still have our first team players, but it'll really help with squad rotation. So I don't know why I didn't do this before, but I think it's time we set up our youth academy. In fact, I'm going to be spending a fair bit to get a couple of new scouts. In fact, we'll get Bento Cruz. I'm happy with just like two scouts. That's more than enough. And we'll sort them out by sending one of them to Italy because this series is based in Italy. So we should be sending players to Italy. And the other one, I kind of want to send to Africa and maybe Cameroon just in case of the odd chance of finding the next Samuletto could be fun if we can pull that off but that's what I've done with the youth academy now and let's hope we can bring in some players next question and this is a big one Inter Milan have a lot of good players out on loan recall Jao Mario to be a rotational player and maybe even Lazaro wow this is something I just never thought of for some reason but it might be the play at least for the short term Recalling a few of the players that are out on loan could help solve a lot of our problems. As you guys know, Perisic is injured. We are desperate for like another winger and someone like Lazaro would certainly, certainly help. And I think we're going to have to do it. I'm going to, you know what, recall Lazaro. He can play as a right mid or a right back, which means he's perfect for that right midfield position. He'll compete with Hakimi for that spot. I'm going to recall him now. We're going to have to spend a million to do it, but I think it'll be worth it. And I want you guys to let me know if this is an approach you guys want me to take because we could recall someone like Politano. Of course, now that we've got Lazaro and Hakimi, I'm not sure if that works, but we'll see. Jao Mario is a big one with Vidal out injured. Let me know. But the only reason I'm not like recalling all of them right now because it's kind of unrealistic. But we're in a desperate situation right now and this is one of our only solutions. So for now, I've recalled Lazaro. I, I'm really keen to see what he's all about on the pitch. He'll be really helpful now that, you know, Hakimi isn't fully fit for this next game that we've got. So he'll be making his debut soon. But yeah, let me know what are your thoughts, guys, on our current situation. With that, press conference done. And Danovic had a stellar episode last time around. I mean, the amount of saves he made, it was just crazy. And well, that bags him his first plate of the episode award. In a way, this feels like we've made a new signing in Valentino Lozado because we haven't used him at all in this series. And we don't know what he's all about, but I think it's going to be really, really helpful for us this season 
with the squad depth issues. So 79 rated Lazaro, he's only 24. He's got a lot of room to progress and grow. And I genuinely can't wait to see what he's all about. He's not had a good time at his previous club. A five average rating in the Champions League, my God. But let's hope he can turn his fortunes around at Inter Milan. Cannot wait to see what he's all about. For this episode, we're trying out something different for our objectives and I've got a really cool one for this one. Reviving Alexis Sanchez. Score a hat-trick with Sanchez in this episode. Now that's a tough objective, but if we do it guys, a plus one overall boost on Alexis Sanchez and for someone who is probably at the end of his career that plus one boost could be absolutely huge so a super cool idea let me know if you guys want to see this happen more often now that i'm on the pc version with the cheat engine i can do all sorts of stuff maybe next time around we could do four feats where we've got to like downgrade the players overall by one or something so we're going to test this out for this episode I'm not sure if we can score a hat-trick with Sanchez, but we'll see. Time to get into some Serie A action as we take on Torino at home. The fitness issues we're dealing with right now, it's not even funny. Like, look at the lineup we're having to field in a game where we're up against the team that are fifth in the league. Lukaku and Alexis Sanchez up top. I'm giving Lautaro a bit of a rest. His stamina is literally half. We're gonna have to start Lazaro in this one. Hakimi gets a rest. Brozovic in midfield, Sensi and Vecino start as well. At the back, Skriniar, it's, it's a makeshift inter team. This season, you're going to see that a lot. We don't have this squad to play, you know, midweek in the Champions League and at the weekend in the Serie A. It's going to be difficult, but the same problem Torino is dealing with as well. Fitness levels are low for them as well. Let's get into this one and see what we can do. Can you even imagine the scenes if we do actually end up scoring a hat-trick with Alexis Sanchez? Oh my god, would that be epic. I'm gonna give it my all to make it happen. Last episode, was it the episode before that? I think it was, yeah, I think it was a couple of episodes ago. He scored a brace in one of the games, so he's got it, man. He does, but a hat-trick is no easy feat. Already the win on the break here with Diaby, a cross-in for Lukaku. That's a fantastic delivery, which Romelu Lukaku had to bury. I don't know how he put that one over the bar. An early golden opportunity for Lukaku, and he skied it. Torino with an opportunity from a free kick about 30 yards away with Simon Verdi to take it. That's decent. That is as good as a free kick gets from that distance. The ball comes back in from the cross. What is going on? Get it away. No. That is the most comical defending I've seen all season long. I mean, I know it's the start of the series, but my God, that might be one of the worst things I've seen on FIFA career mode lately. Like what on earth was that? Simon Zaza is claiming it, but that was just an own goal. Oh man, I'm fuming right now. Like, look at this. The ball comes in. Zaza attacks it. Fair enough, he wins that header. But why is my defender sliding? Oh, I want to break my controller, man. Oh, that is such a dodgy goal to concede. It's not an own goal. No, it's going to go to Zaza. We're on the back foot here. Oh, this is going to be a big problem. Lukaku looks for Alexis Sanchez. Oh, Diaby's made a great run. And here we go on the attack. Musa Diaby, big chance for him here. Can he score this? The shot's taken. It falls for Alexis Sanchez, but he can't control it. Musa Diaby had to score. Maybe the cross for Lukaku would have been a better option, but oh, I messed it up. Lazaro. Oh, good pass for Sanchez. Sanchez looks for Romelu Lukaku. That's brilliant football. Oh, the play between the two of them was just sublime, and we get our equaliser just before half time. Alexis Sanchez with a really neat back heel to find Lukaku. Lukaku did the rest. I know the objective is to get a hat trick with Alexis Sanchez. But at this stage, we just need to get back into the game and Alexis has helped us done exactly that. Lukaku with a lethal finish. We're back in it, it's 1-1. Ah, oh, Torino on the charge, yo. They've got a lot of players committing forward. Simon Zaza, now Verdi. Verdi and Zaza with some nice football. Belotti now banks this one in. And in the 82nd minute, we've conceded and Torino could be giving us our first defeat of the season. Wow. Bellotti with a thumping finish. I mean, he just slammed that one past our keeper. Nothing we could do about it. And I think we need some change. So I'm going to bring on Lautaro Martinez. And maybe even Ashley Young to play instead of Lozado. And we'll switch them around. I don't even know what I'm doing at this point. But let's see if this works. Lautaro has come on. We've got to try and get at least a point from this game. Well, that is the first defeat of our season. I'm disappointed, man. I know Torino are a good team being fifth in the league. But still... We were on a good run. We were winning pretty much every game and this is a big step back. Disappointing result, guys, most definitely. Beaten at last, how do you feel? Um, I guess we couldn't remain unbeaten for like ever, so it had to happen at some point. It's happened now, but we got to pick ourselves up. Honestly, the more I look at this team, it just, it just makes sense, guys, for us to recall 
a few more players that we've loaned out because we're struggling for squad depth here and it is a big problem especially with the limits we put on transfers we really cannot sign apart from like one player in the upcoming window maybe recalling Jao Mario has to be a priority because we need that extra midfielder with Vidal out injured and Mario can play even as a left mid so it just works out really well for us in the comment section I need you guys to let me know if we should make this happen or not because I think we're lacking another player in the squad and Mario could fill that you know void one defeat in the Serie A and that's put us right down to fourth in the league AC Milan now top of the league Roma in second Torino have gone above us and Juventus have lost the game as well we're gonna have a feisty title race this season that's for sure next up Champions League football there couldn't be a better way for us to get back to winning ways but up against Borussia Mönchengladbach we win this game and we put ourselves in a good position to secure Champions League qualification for the round of 16. Let's make it happen. We're actually having to start Ashley Young as our left midfielder for this one. Not ideal, but apart from that, it really is our strongest 11. We're taking this one seriously. Lukaku, Martinez up top, Barella, Eriksen all in midfield. Our defense is looking solid. Hakimi is back, which is very important. He's been one of our best players this season, so I'm hoping he can have another big game. That's our setup. We need to win this game and get back on track. Romano Lukaku, an early chance already for us. Lautaro out of Martinez is broken through. Tries to chip the keeper. And that sums up my luck in this episode. Things just aren't clicking like they did in the previous episodes here. We've bottled a big opportunity early on against Gladbach. Oh, here goes Lautaro Martinez on the attack. Could maybe whip in a cross for Lukaku. That has to be the play. Big chance for Lukaku. Of course, he's going to score that. When you put in a ball like that, for Romelu Lukaku, he ain't messing about. The right decision to make to square it across for Laut uh, Lukaku. Lautaro did exactly that with a decent cross and well. We're 1-0 up against Gladbach. We missed an early chance with Lautaro, which was probably my fault going for the chip shot. But this time, wasn't messing about. A simple cross for Lukaku and he does what he's all about. Scores goals. 1-0 up into Milan. Just the start we needed. Turam. Oh, that's a good pass for Denis Zakaria. That's a phenomenal back heel. That is... That is a well-worked goal, nothing much I can criticize about. We're not in the best patches of form right now because nothing's working for me as such. It's 1-1, similar to that last game, we're on the back foot again. I mean, it's still 1-1, so I shouldn't be all that disappointed. We've still got a lot of time to try and get the winner, so we've just got to be patient. Player on the ball is Gladbach looking extremely dangerous in this second half and they've taken the lead. Oh, we're not in the best of forms right now. I feel like nothing is working for me. And we're 2-1 down to Borussia Mönchengladbach. We need to fight back from this and try and get at least a point. I don't want to end up like Inter Milan in real life in the Champions League. No, that can't happen in this series. We need to step up in this game. Now, this is looking really nice. Here goes Barella on the attack. Looks for Lautaro, who's managed to beat the offside trap. Lautaro Martinez. Can he get that shot off? He can't. That's phenomenal defending from Ginter, but... Another opportunity gone begging for us like come on to ram on the attack looks for Stindl. This could be this could be a nightmare for us Pau Torres with a strong challenge and now he's driving the ball forward and all I see is Hakimi making a fantastic run now This this has to be a goal for us Ashraf Hakimi early cross for Lukaku chest it down No Lukaku How did he not get that under control? The chances we're wasting right now, it's crazy, man. We've got a set piece in a fantastic position. If Romelu Lukaku can, can get on the end of this, he can, but the keeper denies him. Nothing's clicking for me right now, honestly. Barella looks for Pau Torres. Oh, I see a pass inside for Lukaku. That's nice. Romelu Lukaku trying to create a bit of space here. Let's see if that can work. Goes down inside the box, earns us a penalty, and that is a big chance for us to get something out of this. Come on, guys. Let's freaking go. I don't know how Lukaku, with the, the big frame he has, was able to, like, get past the defender with that touch. But he did that brilliantly. Got taken down. Chance for us to make it 2-all. Lukaku earned it. He's gonna take it. I know he missed that last penalty he took in this series. I'm taking this one with Lukaku. And I am trusting myself and going top corner. And that's a banging penalty, guys. Let's go. Romelu Lukaku in the 86th minute. He's flexing as well. He's made it to all. Come on, the game is not over yet. Five minutes to go. We could push for another. Let's freaking go, guys. That's a lifeline. Lautaro does really well. Now, Eriksen here. The roulette is fantastic. Christian Eriksen has gone all the way. What can Eriksen do? A cross back in, but there's just no runners in the box. I'm not liking this at all. 
Oh, Lukaku gets the loose ball. Goes for goal. Still Romelu Lukaku, but Zakaria with the final challenge. We had a chance there to win the game, but we couldn't take it. And it's a two-all draw against Gladbach at home. I'm not going to lie, we showed a lot of character after going 2-1 down to fight back and make it 2 all. So I appreciate that, but we really should have won this game, you know. Oh, well, it is what it is. Real Madrid continue to have the perfect record in the Champions League so far. Two games played, two wins, six points. When we play Real Madrid next in the Champions League, that's going to be big for this group. If we want to finish first, we got to beat them. Next up, we simulate this one against Hellas Verona. 19th in the league they were, but we got a 3-0 win, so that's awesome. It was Brozovic, Alexis Sanchez and Lautaro Martinez who got the goals for us. So I'll take a 3-0 win, but I think Skriniar has picked up a knock. If that's something serious, I'm actually going to cry. Oh, thank God it's only a two-week long injury. And the good thing is we've got international breakup next. So Milan Skriniar should be back for like the big games. I mean, take a look at this. Um, a couple of weeks is gap. Perfect. So he should be available for that Real Madrid game, which is literally the right outcome. We get through another game in the Serie A. This one away against Parma. A 2-0 win with Lautaro scoring a brace. That's perfect. So back-to-back -back wins in the Serie A, I'll take it. Those two wins we got in the Serie A were really helpful because now we're third in the league. Just a point off AC Milan, so that's awesome. Milan are still unbeaten in the league, which is scary. Now, that's kind of similar to what's happening in real life. Maybe it's this Latan effect. For now, though, our focus is on the Champions League as we take on Real Madrid at the San Siro. This is going to be epic. We win this game. And we've got a real shot at challenging Real Madrid for the top spot. And I want to give it everything. That's why I'm going to use my strongest possible team. And we're just going to go for it. I'm so glad we've managed to keep our complete squad fully fit for this upcoming game. Because, yeah, I wanted to use my complete first 11 for this one. And that's why Lautaro, Lukaku, Diaby, all of them started against Real Madrid. And I'm ready for this. Hakimi playing against this former team. I'm sure it's going to be a bit of an emotional one for him. But there's our team, man. Skriniar, Divri, all of them. Skriniar, thankfully, back from his injury, which is absolutely huge for us. Let's get into this one. Looking at the Madrid team. Oh, they look good. They've got good attackers. Benzema leading the line there. Minfi looks unbelievable. But no Sergio Ramos. Now, that's a big plus for us. Here we are, the San Siro for a special, special night up against Real Madrid. They're the best team that I've ever played in the Champions League. There's no denying it. I mean, 13, I think they've won this tournament 13 times. This is going to be epic. I'm ready for this, boys. Champions League, Inter Milan versus Real Madrid. A big, big test for us in this series. And we'll find out if we can cope or not. That guy, Hakimi, is going to have mixed emotions about this one, but hopefully he'll deliver. My form in this episode hasn't been particularly good, so I'm hoping we can win our first game of the episode in this one. Diaby is just so quick. He is legit flying down this uh, left flank and could look for a cross for Lukaku. That's a good delivery. Lukaku tries to attack it, but Courtois did have that covered. One thing I've noticed with this Inter team, I try and look for the cross always. Maybe that's not a good thing, but then again, when you've got players like uh, Lautaro and Lukaku in the box, you want to try and cross as much as possible because that's such an effective way of trying to score. Not going to lie, this game has been such a midfield battle so far. Barely any chances for both teams, but this could lead to something. Now, nah, again, Nacho defends that really well, and once again, it's been a midfield battle, as I said. Both teams looking very competitive and feisty. I think it's going to be one moment that could change the game. One goal and then things may open up. We'll see who gets that goal. Benzema looks for Luka Modric. That's good defending. No, it isn't. Tony Cruz. Now, nah, how? How does that even fall for Cruz perfectly? I just don't get it. Luka Modric was dribbling there. But I, I put in a challenge and I thought I won that. But, but instead, the ball falls perfectly for Tony Cruz who slams that home. I don't know how that happened. I think Modric nutmegged one of our players there. Fair enough, that's, nah, that's, yeah, it's, it's, it's really frustrating. Tony Cruz scores a fantastic goal and we're 1-0 down to Real Madrid. In this episode, we might end up not getting even a single win, like in the ones that we've played. Now nah, we can't let that happen. We go with Diaby, I could slide this one, maybe for Lautaro, can he get past Varane? He's not beating Varane in a sprint. We've literally had zero chances in this one, bar maybe like an early cross or something. It's, it's been dreadful, Real Madrid have controlled this half. And they've done it beautifully. Second half, things really need to change. Otherwise, we're going to end up losing here. And I could see Madrid scoring more. This has been a bit embarrassing, honestly. Skriniar on the attack. I don't know what he's doing there. But Eriksen has now found some space. 
Eriksen looks to bring it inside, does so well, but the shot just got blocked. Real Madrid have defended like champions in this one. That's the level of the elite clubs in the Champions League. We're going to have problems, guys, honestly, because we're barely getting opportunities here. Lautaro. That is some neat football to find Musa Diaby. And I see Lukaku making a really neat run. Can he beat the defender? They can't. But the chance is still on for us. Brozovic looks back now for Eriksen. Lukaku with the run. Gets it on his left foot. Brilliant. Romelu Lukaku with the moment. Let's go, guys. What a goal from him. 1-1 against Real Madrid. Romelu Lukaku is the man to score in this episode. He's probably been our standout player. Pretty much scored in like every game we've played. And this is huge. The equaliser at San Siro. Brilliant play there from Eriksen to find him. But Lukaku, the way he got it on, uh, you know, towards the inside on his left foot. The finish as well was class. Beats Courtois. We finally get the goal, guys. One of our only chances of the game, but it matters because I took that chance. 1-1. One, one, let's freaking go. Let's now push for the winner if possible. One man who does have experience of scoring against Real Madrid is Alexis Sanchez. And I think it's time we bring him on. I don't think he's going to get a hat-trick in this episode. We've definitely failed that objective, but I think he can still add a lot and maybe even score the winner against Madrid. Let's hope for that. Alexis Sanchez controls that well and already looks for a good pass for Diaby. Here he goes, Diaby. Cut back for Lukaku. Nah, Courtois got there first, but a good start for Sanchez. He's got 20 minutes more to try and influence this game. Let's hope he can do it. Here we go with Musa Diaby. Alexis Sanchez could be on the run here. Go on, Sanchez. Oh, brilliantly done. Alexis Sanchez, left foot. Oh my God, Alexis Sanchez with one of the best goals we've scored this season. Unbelievable from Alexis Sanchez. That was... That was genuinely insane. The way he like tapped the ball forward with his head, got it under control and the finish with his left foot. That is unbelievable. What a moment for Alexis Sanchez. As I said before, he's not going to get that hat trick in this, in this game or in, in today's episode. But what he's done right now is sensational. He's given us the lead against Real Madrid. Alexis Sanchez. Oh my God, what a substitution. I'm telling you, man, if things go right with Sanchez, his career could be revived in this series and we could see something special from the Chilean. We know the talent he possesses. We know his work ethic. I'm ready, guys, to see what he's all about. And that's a big moment for him. He scores yet again against Madrid. Is that it for the game? I think it is a big win for us in this series. We've just beaten Real Madrid at San Siro. Alexis Sanchez with a magical moment, guys. To seal the deal for us. Let's go guys. This is huge. We now go top of our Champions League group. Sanchez take a freaking bow. The goal you scored was simply sensational. As I said top of the Champions League group now with 7 points. Let's freaking go guys. We could actually make a push for that top spot. That game against Madrid was difficult though. In other news Alexander Kolarov wants a new contract. I'm just going to say all in good time because I'm not sure about renewing his contract. Let's let's take a look and see what this is all about. So I am pretty sure Kolarov's contract is expiring anyway. It is. He's 34. There's just no reason for us to renew the contract. He's already on pretty high wages. Nah, man. It, it's just not something sensible to do. We'll keep it as is, honestly. That's the plan. Our next game in the Serie A was against Benevento. I mean, we've had a really easy run of games in the Serie A now, like three bottom-placed clubs. We do get another win, 2-1 against Benevento. It was a brace from Christian Eriksen. Interesting to see. An offer for Danilo D'Ambrosio for 6 million with Lazaro back from the loan spell and having Hakimi. I don't really need Danilo D'Ambrosio, so I think we'll accept the offer and get the cash. Let's see if the deal goes through or not. It depends on that. All those wins in the Serie A have put us just a point off AC Milan. And next episode, we'll have more of a push in the Serie A for top spot. We've got games against Genoa. Atalanta is going to be so much fun. Roma coming up as well. Juventus on the horizon. So a lot of big games coming up soon in this series. Should be fun. Player of the episode for me, it's got to be Romelu Lukaku. I mean, he had a terrific episode, man. Honestly. The goals he scored were superb and it has to be him. I mean, let me know if you guys think any other player deserves it. Maybe Sanchez for that winner against Madrid, but Lukaku overall had a better episode, I feel. But for now, guys, this is where we're wrapping up today's episode. A lot of questions for the next episode. What do we do with Jean Mario? Do we recall him to help with our squad depth issues? Do we recall any other players? What, what are we supposed to do with the Youth Academy? A lot to look forward to in the future episodes. If you're enjoying this series, 
drop a like subscribe if you're new around here and i'll catch you all next time